fame affected bounty hunting and your personal life? I would have to say it's it's pretty much been a roller coaster ride. We never expected when we started this that uh, it would ever turn into anything like this. So I'm just basically holding on and going along with the ride and let's see where it takes Woo! me. Okay, this is from Devon. Devon, you there? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> She's excited. Oh, is that really you, Devon? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know from Leland, is there any fugitive capture that touched, which was the most touching fugitive capture you ever had? Which one made you cry or made you feel bad or which one got to you, son? I would say probably the one that made me feel the best would, of course, be Andrew Luster. And, uh, I, feel, I feel like that one there, I was able to to do the most part of helping anybody out, which, you know, there's a lot of women victims out there that he, uh, while he was out on the loose, you know, they were losing sleep, they couldn't uh, rest at night, so that there, right, uh, that capture right there was probably the top one. As you know, Andrew Luster had 86 counts of rape, and poor Leland uh, took him to Mexico, it wasn't for a vacation, I told him just stand there and help you tackle this guy's son. And we did, now, so, and I don't mean to brag about my son, but Leland, the, well, who's your coach that, that trained you? Jesus Salud. Jesus Salud, who is also known as the Hawaiian Punch, is one of the greatest boxers in the entire world. So whether he's five foot seven or whatever, as you see in that one show, he took that 280 pound boy who <laughs> was six foot one and dropped. Yeah. 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 is a very, what I, you know how you have, what's the word, political, like live through your children? Well, what a about? <laughs> You pull it for a little and Lily, live to your children. But I did, you know, I was a boxer too, but I didn't win every fight. So Leland has won and made him retire last year. He's done. So he wins every fight. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, because I tell Beth that he's done. <laughs> but, but I, he is very tough. So I, you know, nowadays, can you believe that I changed these boys' diapers? And, oh. No. Can you imagine how I feel now when they're running up in front of dad to the door to get the guy and I'm like, don't, and I can't say don't because they want to they be the guy that captures them. You imagine how I feel and how proud I am as a father that they're doing that. It's amazing. So what's the next one? This one here is from Cora. It says, do you ever simply get tired of what you do and need to seek peace? We are like wolves, okay? Mm -hmm. Our, no, we went, we went uh, like a pack of wolves. If they're not eating, they're like starting to eat each other. <laughs> we went fishing the other day, two days, we caught all these fish and we're like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, he's like, let's go get one, dad. I'm like, we just caught, I don't need one of them, let's go get a real guy. Okay, you know, because the adrenaline, you just, the adrenaline goes, your body gets hooked on that, right? And you've got to have, you've got to fulfill that. We, when we come home without a capture, I never hate him, he never hates me, but we don't like, all of us don't like none of us. <laughs> no, especially Beth, get away from me. Oh, he's still on the loose. Oh my God, how can you say that? I'm like, oh, man. And the next day we capture her, she's tiptoeing through the tulips. Uh. So, so it's, when you get like that as a family, you go do this, and you don't do what you're set out to do, you don't like each other. But then when you do, you're like <laughs> all happy with each other, praise the Lord, yo, -ho, we're great. But it's hard if you don't capture the guy. What's the next one? This one is from Rachel and it says, uh, an example to Gary and uh, Bonnie, it says, do you ever encourage them to become bounty hunters? You know, Gary, like I said to you before we started, Gary is starting to do it. Who knows in the next 10 years what weaponry the criminal will have, you know, what both our countries, what direction they're going into. Uh, no. I want Bonnie to be the bug girl and Gary to be the little bug thing on TV. Hi, this is a caterpillar. This has, <laughs> this has a metamorphosis. It turns into a butterfly. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. You say you're right. And Gary is, I want Gary to play professional sports because he like hits home runs because he's got his mother in him. So I hopefully they don't go to bounty hunting. 
I wanted him to do the same thing, but you know, he ended up hunting, so <laughs> I kind of don't. The last question is, it says, how do you balance work and family life? You work with your family. Yeah. <laughs> I said years ago when the show first started, people said, oh, dog, it's amazing that you can work with your family. And I was like, I thought that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And now after five, six years later, I'm like, oh, thank you. Would you please pray for me? <laughs> no, because it is hard to keep us all together, all in love. You know how you're like in Christmas, I'll forgive John for what he did for last Thanksgiving. Come on, Dad, hug everybody. You know, just right now, hug everybody, forget it. Your family, you're the same blood. You made the kid that hates you. There's something in you that, you know, you got to go to him and say, hey, I'm sorry you hate me. I hated my dad too. Let's start over. One thing about Canada, what you guys are doing, two things, and then I'm, gonna, I'm done. <laughs> Sit there. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that you guys will not let gangbangers into restaurants. You will not let them into stores. I don't. In America, in America, because we treated some nationalities bad years ago, we feel guilty about it, so we give the criminal every right that the taxpayer has. And we've ruined our criminal justice system. You know, in America, if you set a booby trap in your house and somebody burglarizes it and they get hurt, you can get sued for hurting the poor yep. punk. Yep. Caca. Canada, here's what your law says. You gangbang, you don't eat. You gang, and your laws are working. You gangbang, you don't drive a car. They won't sell the guy a t-shirt. <clears throat> I know a particular outlaw motorcycle gang that called me the other day and said, we hate Canada. I go, why? He goes, we went to the restaurant to eat, man. They wouldn't even feed us. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, another thing I love, I'm going to tell you two more, one more thing I love and one I don't like, which is terrible. I'm going to put this in your brain. I love no guns. Yeah. <laughs> we use pepper ball guns. You pretend like you're Mike Tyson and you want to hit that criminal right in the mouth. I happen to know Mike Tyson. He's a good brother of mine. This pepper ball extends your punch 30 yards. When you see me go, because mine's on fully auto. I'm nailing him, man, because I love that. But the guy is not dead. America is being ruined. You know what America is doing? We're outlawing guns here. I'm against the bullet. I'm not against the gun. So easy NRA. I, we're, we're, we're disarming all these other countries. We need to disarm our own backyard. Am I right? Yes. What I don't like about Canada is the 19-year-old drinking age. <laughs> that is terrible. You should. You, should, you see that? <laughs> I heard you say you should be 18. That's terrible. <laughs> listen. Here's a fact. 18. Here's a fact. But listen. Here's a fact. Until you're 21, your body is not fully developed. Do you hear what I say? Yes. Until you're 21, it's a proven fact that your body, your liver is not fully grown, your kidneys are not fully grown, your heart is not fully grown. The Bible talks about the age accountability and scholars in the Bible find it to be around 21. Why? You're done growing, you're done developing. Now, if you have a country, a state that allows you to drink before you're 21, it is child abuse. Am I right? Oh. Am I right? That'd be one hell of a debate. If adults at 11 o'clock or so go out, go get you some pepper spray and drive around Canada at 11.30 <laughs> and watch how many drunk kids there are crossing the streets, taking off their shirts, throwing up the street. 19 is way too young to pour booze down your body when it's not fully developed and run them up. That's the fact. So I would come sponsor anything you know, physically, financially, whatever I would do to change that law and get it back up to 21. Anytime anybody wants to hit the legislature, we go in there and we boycott, we do whatever we, the liquor stores, hey, let's take them. You know what? Let's take them. I, I almost said, let's burn them down. I oh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Let's take them head on. What do you mean the liquor lobbyists are big? They, can they eat pepper balls? <laughs> 
they're not too big for us parents to go in and say, that's it, you're 21, you can drink, until then, you're not going to do it. We don't care, let's don't let, like in Canada, like America did, is push them guys, push us around to where we can't even protect our own houses now. Stop it right now, please. Is that it? Okay, we love you guys, thank you, aloha, see you tomorrow.